So I'd like to introduce Get Active Online as a potential part of the solution for the EU versus the virus hackathon. Many cultural events are taking place virtually, but not everyone is aware of them. And the question is how to ensure that it arrives to a great audience. And Get Active Online rapidly adapted um, to the COVID-19 to deliver sessions online. So in this little webinar, the Get Active Online team are going to talk a little bit about our response, our infrastructure, and how we're promoting Get Active Online, hoping that it's going to be beneficial to uh, a larger audience. Hello, I'm Andrea. I'm the Artistic Director for Intercultural Roots. I am a performer, an artist, and a teacher, and body practitioner for many, many years between energetic dance, dance theater, physical theater, and healing arts. Um, hi, uh, my name's Maggie. Um, I, my background is in 3D design and dance, theater, choreography, but also in administration, personal assistant work for high net worth individuals, um, and now working in uh, PR and promotion and communications for Intercultural Roots Get Active Online. Hi everyone, my name is Tiago Gamboji. I'm from Brazil. I've been in the UK for over 20 years. I'm a dancer, actor, pole dancer, clown, choreographer, and producer. And uh, I work in the communication side of Intercultural Roots together with Maggie. Yeah, I'm Alex, and uh, yeah, I'm the founder and executive director for Intercultural Roots. And um, yeah, my background is in uh, working with Chinese Taoist movement, breath, and energy practices for over 30 years now. Um, and also, you know, supporting organizations. So I work with not-for-profits, helping organizations to get established and to, you know, find their, their roots in fundraising and resourcing projects. So, yeah, hello. Our project today, our initiative, Get Active Online, came from the previous project called Health and Wealth that was created to promote well-being and also to tackle into issues related to loneliness and mental health. And we uh, had a specific approach on this. We are doing this through art, uh, artistic creative labs, uh, gatherings around and body practices. And Get Active Online now, it's connecting people, not just the people that are teaching, but people throughout the world that gathering in a Zoom classroom, and so we have, for example, sisters from, one is in Brooklyn and another is in Sheffield, and they are uh, every Thursday, 7 p.m., acting together, doing a well-being activity together. So it would be important to share with people the activities that we cover. We offer dance, theater, Qigong practice, Taoist practice, Tai Chi, meditation, healing dances, um, all kinds of physical theater and art arts, craft, yoga, pilates, also arts and practices that are more uh, metaphysical and those who are more concrete and fitness oriented. So it's a whole spectrum of healing and well-being practices. We have people from so many cute cultures like US, Brazil, Spain, Australia, German, many different places in, in Europe. And, and we are promoting the awareness that the practices that are maybe seen far distant, actually they are not so distant like that, they are connected. So it's also the idea of everybody who has a practice, a quality practice, you know, that is a teacher ready for years and it has a content that is well developed and well taken care. So those people can still sharing their practices and making that content to be delivered to others that will then have their well-being, their discipline in their, in their houses, you know, a routine that it's a plenish of 
health, and creativity. So it's it's like we're saying like an international path platform for collective actions. Well, certainly, I think it's about um, building community, and uh, and I think in this moment in particular. Um, when we moved from the festival over to, to going online, it really opened things up internationally for people to come to class who are in San Francisco, as you said, someone in New York, someone's in France, someone's in, in Belgium. So I, I think that's kind of ex exploded the, the, the people that we're, we're able to draw in mm -hmm. uh, the sessions. Yeah, I just want to focus a little bit on the infrastructure of our platform for Get Active Online. And of course, the, the first thing is the platform we're using is Zoom Pro. Um, and we've got a license from that from the University of California at Davis Theater and Dance. So they're allowing us to use their Zoom Pro license, which is really, really great and saving us a lot of money. Um, and, and within Zoom Pro, we've been very careful about the settings you know, the, uh, we're trying to make it open and accessible. So we don't pre-register, we don't have passwords, but we do, um, you know, people do have to sign up to Zoom Pro or use their Google or their Facebook account to get in there. So there's a few settings that we do to enable it to be a smooth process, but also that there's some uh, element of security, you know, that we know who's coming in and and the page, really what it's doing is it, it's, um, it's kind of displaying two calendars which, you know, contain our schedule for the, the week. Or it's, the calendars are Google calendars. So we've integrated Google calendars into the web page, which is a little bit of a kind of technology innovation, you know, to get that HTML code from the Google calendars that can be embedded in the web page. The, the web page is built using WordPress. We don't charge people for the sessions. We encourage voluntary contributions um, to help us with the costs. And our costs right now to enable Get Active Online are, are about 1,200 pounds per week. Um, it's quite expensive. So we've been pulling all of our funding and reserves into enabling this. So we ask for voluntary contributions from people to go some way towards helping with those costs and to enable us to be sustainable. Um, right now it isn't sustainable, so we're trying to get funding as well to support what we're currently doing, but also we really want to scale this up and get it out to as many people as possible. Um, you know, you've met some of our team in this webinar today. We also have Wendy, who's just doing sterling work on administration and the, the finances. We have a technology support team. Uh, so we have Isabella, who hosts the sessions and pulls off the video recordings from the sessions in gallery and speaker view. And we make those available to people who contribute as well. We have Xander in the background who edits those videos and put titles and kind of copyright watermarks on them and so forth. Um, and of course we have all our practitioners who are delivering the sessions. Um, we've got a, a really great network and community of practitioners that Andrea manages um, and keeps in touch with. So we're really, really grateful and thankful to those practitioners who we pay to deliver the sessions. A lot of those practitioners have lost gigs, lost jobs, they don't have income. So not only is Get Active Online supporting the public, it's also supporting the freelance practitioners. So I, I, I say that the first thing, you know, when we started this work, we looked at um, intercultural roots and Get Active Online to our audience. Who is our audience? And then, uh, and also other questions we had, what, what does intercultural roots stands for? And we looked at that and uh, also Health and Wealth, the festival. And we worked with a graphic designer to produce a logo. So we produce a logo actually to the Health and Wealth. And we're currently finishing up the, the um, Intercultural Roots logo on the visual identity. And all that, all that knowledge and that we took 
to, to I would say the first thing, the first point we're going to cover, which is social media. Uh, so working those three platforms together, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So um, always working with powerful images and engaging copy. So Maggie generally is responsible for the copy. So that's, and, and that's, that's quite, quite important. Well, it works together with the imagery, really. Um, so the, the, the copies, for example, in the, in the email, um, I get a lot of emails. What makes me open one? So it's, it's, it's that the subject matter, it's in the subject um, box. And what's going to make people open open the email see what we have um because you know if they don't open the email they're not they're not going to see all the sessions that we have they're not going to engage with that so that it's very little but it's very important mm. to get them to open up and and see what, and get them involved with what's going on on at, on get active online yes yeah, so, so those emails so it's through our mailchimp account so we have two databases that we are we're dabbing on. So we work on with a weekly MailChimp, sometimes actually three times a week because this was getting so big. So now we're focusing on smaller chunks of class. Um, so some, some strategies, uh, going to Facebook groups that uh, are interested in that activity. Jim. Three, press contacts and arts organizations. Mm -hmm. So we contact, we send our press release and images and our schedule to arts organizations. And I'm currently national. working through a list, a national list of newspapers, radios, TV. So you know, I go through this list and go to each website to get uh, real emails for the journalists. So, and yeah. number four, we say um, talking to people. Yeah. Uh, for example, um, I was speaking with someone uh, recently about a totally different subject, but then I started talking about Get Active Online and she actually gave me a contact to a, a, a health uh, talk radio station. If we had more resources, definitely we could expand and reach out more people. Mm -hmm. So impact in the health and well-being and benefit of the outcome of those activities. But also I see the potential to develop content in other formats that can be very helpful for anxiety and mental health issues. We would be able first to translate to Spanish and invite more of the Spanish community. You know, now what prevents us to do now is really the lack of resources. And also because we're focusing community, we're working with the small community that we already have. But I have already uh, uh, people that are taking the classes. They are connected with Cuba, with Spain, and would like to jump in. So. We can afford to translate to, uh, we have been having loads of people from German and, and, and Holland. So at least we, we could have German, Dutch, uh, Spanish, Portuguese and English to attend our community. Would be lovely if we could connect those, co those communities as, as well. Mm. You know. I, I wanted to add that this actually is about the post pandemic time, but I think what we've learned, many people have already benefited from, from the sessions. Maybe people that don't normally do physical exercise. So what I mean is, those people will want to carry on. Maybe they will go into real life studios, but maybe they want to carry on in their homes. People well, they're inhibited and they think they are not enough or they think mm -hmm. they are, I will expose myself. Actually, I don't know how to dance, you yeah. know, so I'm going yeah. to a studio and actually I don't dance. And as they are in their house, they, they dare. A dance studio can be quite intimidating, especially yeah. when you go in there and everybody can get their leg up to their ear. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, you know, these people know what they're doing. And it can be a very intimidating setting. Yeah. Um, I think you're right that, that there is that, that where people feel secure generally in their own homes, you know, they're comfortable, it's their space, but they are allowed to go into the shared space through the, you know, through Zoom, through this, this online facility that we... That yeah. We